How does the noble Claudia treat you? In the manner that a Roman lady treats a slave. Like a slave. Not all Roman women are like Claudia. Some are better, some are worse. You could be worse off. Believe me. Nothing matters anymore. My home was destroyed by your soldiers. My father and mother slaughtered like cattle. Their only crime was to defend their place, their birthplace. One, one doesn't ask of a tool, a lifeless object, if existence is pleasant. Then why do you ask me how I am treated? Look, I'm only a soldier. Anyway, I can't change the way things are. There are masters and slaves, like there are pretty girls and ugly girls, wise men and fools. The masters, not the slaves, find this logical. <laughs> My father. I couldn't do anything to save him. I'll never forgive myself for it. There was nothing you could do. We were being spied on by Queen Samara. I ran after you to warn you, but we were too late. I only got there in time to hear the last words of my father. He ordered me to lead you to the rendezvous where he'd intended to take you. You must join the others so that they'll know you're still alive and won't abandon us. You know better than that. I could never abandon you, Agar. Thank you, Hercules. On your shoulders rests the future of the people of Samar. I... I have great admiration for you. I will show you a way out of the palace that will lead us into open country beyond the city walls. We must be very careful not to be seen. As soon as night falls, we can come back to the city. And did they also inform you of the urgent nature of our mission? Naturally. And because we know what you're trying to do, you may count on our help. This anti-radar is supposed to be somewhere in our country, and we don't want it here. You arrived at just the right time. You will find something which will be of interest to you at the house of an Oriental called Tanaki. I know him. He was arrested twice on suspicion of smuggling. But we believe he's working for one of the big powers. Why do you? We found that he's taken a lot of trips to the Orient. And we've been trying to get enough proof to be able to try him. You might be glad to know that you'll be spared that trouble. Somebody decided to do away with him. He's been murdered. I would say the state's been saved some expense. I was there, but unfortunately I didn't see who did it. He must have double-crossed somebody. Is that all you know? Yes. But if I find out anything else about him or the killers, I'll be sure and let you know. I'd appreciate that. And if you should ever want to reach me, just call the political section at any time. Mm. Oh, by the way, Captain, I forgot to tell you that my pistol is a 22 caliber, which uses Winchester Super Sonic. Now that I've heard about your family, why don't you tell me something about you? <laughs> my story is very simple. I was born here. My mother died when I was only a child. And from that time on, all I've done is take care of my father. I've never left Canyon City. And the only new things that ever happen in my life are when someone comes from the outside. <laughs> Disappointed? Oh, no. You're very sweet. Uh, just a little impulsive, that's all. What do you mean by that? Back at the house, you didn't take your eyes off me. I was afraid Pop had noticed it. I've never seen a girl as pretty as you anywhere. You'll make me blush. Oh, fine. You look even better with red cheeks. That's enough, Jeff. Now, Philip, come and tell me all about yourself. I'd love to, but I'm afraid business comes uh, first. Cognac? Thanks. I'll have one if you'll join me. You know, I ought to make a confession. One of my best kept secrets has been the hope that one day I'd meet you. You're quite famous. I followed your exploits for some years. <laughs> You're looking at me as if I were a femme fatale. I'm overwhelmed by you. <laughs> uh, do you know my mission? Oh, yes. We've been literally bombarded with messages about it. So I was told. I was also told Cigarette, you... Cigarette, Philip. I'm sorry. I must apologize for interrupting you. Don't worry, it wasn't that important. We were talking about my mission, weren't we? What are your plans? The messages from the Bureau aren't clear. 
They weren't meant to be. You're really a good for nothing, aren't you? First you came and posed as an eccentric doctor and caused nothing but trouble. Then you became sugar cult and you caused more trouble. Agony's dead because of you. So now you're going away. Come here, little girl. I wish you were dead. Don't you touch me. I know why you're going. All right. You tell me why. Because you've made a deal with Haverbrook. Be quiet, Josephine. It's better that sugar cult's going. Why? Tell me what's going on instead of trying to hush me up. Why get upset? There's nothing you don't know about. What's going on? It's nothing, just that kid, Sybil. Mooning over some guy. Well, it happens to all of us. You went through it, too, I bet. Sure, it's normal. Though the guy she likes is the wrong kind. Meaning? I've met up with guys like that before, and they cause trouble every time. Well, talk to the kid. It's useless. She won't listen to reason, and she's as stubborn as a mule. She'd listen to you. I'm sure of it. All right, I'll try. I promised the sheriff I'd help him out a spell. I ain't moving on yet. Oh, Johnny, that's really marvelous. I can hardly believe it. This time, I hope you'll stay around a while. Why don't you work with me? Because I still have to find my son. Until I find out if he lives, I'll have no peace. I've been searching for him all these years, and I won't give up yet. But it's all so useless. How long are you going to go on living full of sadness and bitterness? Please stay here. Johnny, can't you try and settle down? 